last year we were doing a workshop for ara with group of young girls in school and we were basically doing like a sex education course with them and i think there was a 11 or 12 year old girl who when we were talking about menstruation said that you know when i got my period i was surprised that my blood was red i thought it'd be blue because in sanitary pads for the longest time they used to pour blue, blue liquid yeah, they yeah. wouldn't pour red liquid so she thought that her period blood was going to be blue what the hell hey where are you looking can you guess what's cooking i'm a booking 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 you up for a sneak for a peek baby every week you're gonna scream 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 what the hell navya are you on trip in are you here navya kare baat to khul ke ye hai navya where the mom where the nani comes navya Menstrual blood is the only blood not born from violence yet we're the most ashamed of it so this is a quote by Maya Shorts and one that i really like because it gets us thinking about why the hell we're so ashamed of talking about periods yes i said the word period do you know what some of the other words are for this code red bloody mary shark week cranberry woman massacre at the y it honestly sounds like i'm giving you some horror movie recommendations i'm sure mom and nani are going to be amused but we are going to ride the red wave today and talk about all of this this is honestly been a conversation that i've been really passionate about for the last two years I literally started an entire business just to talk about women's health and feminine health and destigmatize these conversations around women's bodies. And that's exactly what we're going to do in today's episode, which is coming up right after this short break. Hello everyone. Other than the audio treats that my mom and nani have been giving you, I have another treat for you. If you loved this episode, come over to the IVM store for some exclusive what the hell Navya merch. We have limited edition t-shirts and hoodies for this episode. Get these and show off your love. It's a good morning for me. I'm quite energized. I've had 3 cups of coffee That's and I'm very, very bad for your health. Oh. Well, health is what we're going to be talking about today, women's health, which is <laughs> so cheesy. Yeah. It's like the cheesiest took, segue ever. I took the opportunity, okay? I saw it and I took and it. And I said it purposely. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Nani. Wow, yeah. what a team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dynamic <laughs> duo. We really are actually. Yeah. Okay, well, as I said, today's conversation is about women's health, which is my personal favorite topic because that's all I've been doing for two and a half years. Um, I don't think you yourself being a woman lead a very healthy life but we'll talk about that later. Yes. Mm. But um okay so let's talk about periods as our first topic of conversation. What was your first period experience like mom? Oh. Was it awkward for you? Was it difficult? Were you? Did you feel it was easy for you to talk about it with Nana? Yeah, Nani? I don't. I, I mean, with Nani, I don't think I said anything to Nana. It was. It was fine. It was not uh, uncomfortable. It was not uncomfortable. I think it was okay. And what about you, Nani? What was your? Do you remember your first period and what did you do and how was yeah, that? Yeah, but it was, you know, because it was my grandmother. Hmm. who realized that i've started my period and she told my mother and my mother this thing and i discussed it with my father yeah i know you keep saying <laughs> what is this about you had so, a very open relationship yeah, so he with him. said he explained to me and uh, i said oh this is what it means <laughs> <laughs> this is what you know he said actually it's very unfair to women that they have to go through all this yeah. if i had my way i'd have a conversation with god Oh my god. <laughs> That's also something we're going to talk about later is how mm-hmm. biologically we are, you know, have to deal with a lot why? more. I mean, I I really get very angry about that. What? Yeah. Why women have to go through so much pain and pain. I mean, physical pain for everything that they achieve and mental pain for achieving. Yeah, which is true. But mom, it's a constant yeah, struggle right. for women, you know. Yeah, I, I agree. To I survive well uh, a decent. Uh, yeah, I mean that biologically it's biased, you know, because we yeah. have to go yeah. through pregnancy, menstruation, menopause, and it's not that all three of these are just physical experiences. It's yeah. also emotionally mm. and mentally very difficult yes. for women. Yes, it starts with menstruation. You know, when 
you're becoming a woman, then you have pregnancy, then you have menopause, which is something that happens, you know, when you're middle age and it's difficult. And I think actually not a lot of, um, I mean, menstruation still, you know, we started talking about a lot more, but menopause is a topic that's not yes. really widely discussed. And, and I we have, have lots our prime candidate sitting here who has a lot to say about that. Yes. I mean, yeah. So like I said, now we've started opening up about periods and talking about menstruation. Pregnancy, obviously, is something that's always been talked about. I have many, many thoughts. Please share them with us. On menopause. women in midlife, not just menopause, just general midlife, which of course, like one of the biggest events that happens to a woman in midlife is menopause. Mm -hmm. And uh, as someone who is in that phase, yeah, midlife phase, it is very frightening because just everything is, it's out of, basically it's out of your control. It's not something that you say, look, I, I choose to, go you know, go menopause. through this. And menopause means a lot of things. You know, you lose hair, you start putting on weight. Also, there are a lot of other sort of, you know, conditions. You're, you you suddenly have mood swings, you have temperature control issues. Really? Because there's not enough information about it. There's not enough counseling for it. A lot of women lose a lot of self-confidence and it leads to a lot of issues, mental health issues. I'm quite sure. And no one helps you through it. No one explains it to you. You just have to grin and bear it. You know, and, and especially these days where there's so much emphasis on the outward appearance. Mm -hmm. Women want to look 20 till they're 80. And they want to have thick heads of hair. They want to have, you know, fit into jeans they wore in college. And because your hormones are all over the place, you can try what you like. Unless you starve yourself, your body is out of your control to a large mm -hmm. extent. And it's not just these superficial things. It's also things like, you know, like bone health. Indian women don't know anything about that. You, They don't know that calcium is so important for you after a certain stage because our bones just go weak. We're infamous for this. Yeah, Your eyesight gets a little weak. Sometimes your memory is a little fuzzy. Today, for example, <laughs> I thought I'd left my phone behind, but it was in my pocket. And I didn't remember this. You know, you, you leave things, you forget things. And in the middle of all this, you're trying to manage a job. You're trying to run a home. You're trying to handle, I'm assuming, some kids... Some women have grandkids by now, very young grandkids. Basically, you feel like you've just been put on the shelf. There is no regard for women after the age of 40, 50. They, you're just left on the shelf. But they, You feel because you your main purpose, has supposedly, been which is, you know, being able to procreate, you can't do that anymore. You serve no purpose. And basically, now you have to fade into the background. You have to start dressing in a certain way, very conservative, very, you know, sort of, you can't be bold or bright or, and you have to start behaving in a certain way and basically slowly just retire from life. And I think mm -hmm. it's disgusting and appalling. And why should women my age, who have so much still to live for, give, be forced to do this? It's not something you choose to do. It's something that happens to you. It doesn't happen to men. They will never understand it. They will never understand it. And it is, it actually angers me. And a lot of times, I'm sorry to say, my own children say it to me, if I'm in a bad mood and I shout at them, they say, oh, oh mom's menopausing today. That's, That's not fair. That's also reason for shouting at us. You're like, don't irritate me, I'm menopausing. No, I don't say that. But you guys say it all the time. And for you, it's a joke. But think about it. For me, it's like, Everything is going south and it's a very mm. it's a very insecure time for for women and there's no help there's nothing and and this is like such a huge chunk of women in India think about it yeah, these I'm are thinking. not women who are you know hapless people these are women who are now largely working women they're at the top of their game also they're they're professionals they have a mind of their own they're spending money they're the ones who handle all the money and yet Nothing, nothing for them. It's really upset. It really upsets me. Like Navya, in India, are there any apps or are there any platforms for women who want to speak Ara? about? No. What do you mean? Women my age. But we who, talk who are going through menopause. menopause and who who have communities to speak about it. But we talk about menopause. Where you support 
people through it because that's the only way. If you feel you're going through it alone and you look at everybody else and everybody is so now filtered. Everything yep. is filtered. I mean, we, we and you feel, wow, they're things. looking great. But you don't know that they're slogging and eating like a slice of... Yeah, but no one's going to put up the, you know, they put up that. No, but what I'm saying front. is when you meet, like, there's no platform where you can meet other women or, or where, you know, other women say, yeah, I'm going through this and it's really, it's just knocking me out. And every day is a struggle. But and see, the, I I feel that, I mean, there is no platform obviously like that. Actually, even but, when women meet their friends... Because it's this so stigmatized, nobody ever wants to say how hard they're working to to stay in the shape they are in. Nobody. So everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't work out. No, just rolled out well, of bed why? and why I look like do this. Women feel like I they don't have to know. Be... I do not know. It it just Maybe baffles it's me. Conditioning. I think it's it's more in India. Yeah, it's a conditioning. It's, it's not it's more a... in India. It's everywhere, Mama. Please, it's I think it's so actually much. worse. It is. I think it's actually worse. And for no, example, the... that whole thing with Kim Kardashian losing sixteen pounds to fit into her Met Gala dress Oof. that was insane. I mean, I personally thought that was ridiculous yeah. because. But she got called out for it. Yeah, which is good. Which people is people here is... don't get called out for it. You know, I'm sure people are starving themselves and they're like unrealistic body images. Yeah, because uh, they're making images. money off that. You know? Yeah, but, you know, and it's it's not sending healthy messages. So it's messages. all about, again, money. commerce. It's yeah. not money. sending yeah. a healthy Marketing. message to young girls and it's sending a very unhealthy precedent for women my age who will do themselves a lot of harm because there are a lot of vitamins, nutrients, etc., minerals that you need at this age to just deal with, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of stuff. And uh, women who are you know, not eating or starving or binging or what have you are on all these fad diets, etc. It's, you know, nobody is exempt from it. Nobody sails through this this part of life. At least, okay, you know, when... You guys are just scaring you know, me now. No, I'm like I mean, like, oh, it, it is it's, not it's so scary, Navya, That's... but it is... It is yeah, but I'm like, oh my god. It's, what, it's, you know? it's significant. When it's I get to it's that a age, massive deal. What do I do? This is what I'm saying, that, you know... I asked my mother, I said, what age did you stop menstruation? She said, 50. And I said, and then what happened? She said, I was very happy. (laughs) I said, why? She said, one headache off. Yeah. She never complained. Okay, and my other question is that when you were, you know, obviously going through menopause, both of you, how aware or involved were the men in your life? Zero, zero, not at all. So they obviously are don't men, at least oh, my and by age the way, group, they were never a, even, they, I don't think they ever discussed women and their problems. No, so today you can very well tell like your brother, your son or your husband that listen, I'm PMSing or I have like very bad period cramps. So I don't want to come yeah, to this to party. All the time. And they get it. Yeah, They get it and they like just like, yeah, okay, I understand. But I mean... I don't think you can say, listen, I'm menopausing because there's, it's not a definite, it's not a definite, it'll last three days. It's not a definite, it'll last three days and then it goes away. It's going to last for as long as it lasts. Some people, it lasts for a couple of years. But I think only by saying it, they start getting more But then women are a little worried because then if you're a little emotionally excitable, then everyone tells you, oh, you're just, you're a menopausal. You know, it's it's like a you don't want that to be because yeah, then no one that, takes you seriously. They say, oh, she's crying because she's menopausing, or she's angry because she's menopausing. It's always like that. It's like what 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 you what they say. Oh, you're it's PMSing, actually, so like, you're about this. Like, if I was reading something where they were talking about women as world leaders and you know prime ministers and heads of state and how the number one critique that most people say towards against you know women being in in positions of leaderships is that oh they're too emotional but actually there was a study that came out saying that actually something that 90 percent of men and most world leaders lack today is emotion and empathy and a lot of the problems that we face as a country or even globally is because of this lack of emotion yeah i read and empathy. something once where and they how said women are actually better suited to be leaders in in this period of time like in the 21st century post-pandemic because they're more emotional and it's actually one of our biggest strengths not a weakness so this this is something i read somewhere that we've given men a chance to run the world and we see what they're doing with it 
and maybe it's it's time you start giving women more positions of power and decision making and see what they do with it. It's a nice quote. I have to speak on. Well, you can use some of these yes, quotes. It's a nice quote. Yeah. Yes, and you can I read it somewhere. I don't know where. It's emotion. not my original thought. I'm just telling. No, no, no. You. Basically, saying look what they've done. Look yeah. what look where we are yeah. today. Yeah. I mean, whether it's climate, whether it's wars, whether it's diseases, it's it's. Yeah, literally end yes. of days kind of situation, and maybe you should try now giving women a little hand at the top job and yeah, see if one. they can fix it. Well, that's what and, I But mean, there's like... another thing, you know. I read that they, when things are out of control, you know, even in like a in a company or a, a multinational, when things are really at their worst, they always bring in a woman to sort it out, and then if it doesn't, then you know she gets the blame. It's it's a thing. Oh, it happens, so. you know. They, when things are out of beyond control, and you have to change things around for women in the workplace, it's after a long time that you know things like period leaves and even having proper provisions for sanitary pads and things have just about started, started. coming in, like in offices where. You know, earlier I'm sure you know they didn't even have sanitary pads in public toilets, Not which is still something that doesn't actually but happen. It's, it's but it's it's all happening now. Exactly, it's happening. But I doubt that that's something that's happening. You know, for menopause, where you know you get leave for something like that. I don't think that's something that. Okay, but I'm saying that. What do you think about period leaves? Because there's this whole argument about how. But isn't that sort of null and void now? If people are doing half and half work from home, come into office twice. Yeah, but twice when a week. there wasn't so if the you pandemic. Have, yeah, I think it's a legitimate thing. But then thing. there was this whole argument about how, on one side, people were like, "It's great that you know you're giving." period leave for when mm-hmm. you know you can't come in physically because of cramps or anything and then the other side there was this whole thing of that oh well you know if women are not going to come in and not work then why should they be paid the same amount as men if they anyway aren't in. so i don't yeah, think so there was like this whole thing that happened about period leaves and how there was this whole debate so what side of the debate are you on obviously on the side of peer, you i mean you should get period yes leave. it's 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 debilitating a yeah. lot of, I mean, not for me personally, but for a lot of women, it's debilitating. They have terrible cramps. Yeah. You're in a bad state. I mean, different women experience it in different yes, ways. Yes, and anyway, you just want to lie in bed and eat chocolate and carbs and you just want to be left alone, not, <laughs> you know, really try and wake up and do all this. And it's and most women who are working and if they have families, it's just terrible because mm-hmm. you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting and then work stuff and then you're dealing with this which it takes a significant toll on your body i'm sure when you were working nani oh it was terrible it wasn't as it was really bad How and was especially it? you know when we used to do outdoors hmm for shoots oh for yeah shoot. you didn't have vans and uh, all in that time you didn't time. have vans so where you did had you had to change behind bushes the sanitary pad everything that's crazy Yes, it is crazy. There were not even enough toilets. How do you, when you're shooting outdoor on a field or on a mountain top? My God, it's crazy. I mean, it was awkward. It was embarrassing. Yeah. And you know, I'm sorry for getting so graphic, but you used three or four pads. Yeah. So that and you carried plastic bags so that you could discard one, put it in the plastic bag, and put it. In a basket so that when you go home, you can get rid of it. I mean, I remember when we were small and fortunately we used sanitary towels. We didn't have to use cloth or whatever it is. And my mother had kept a drum Hmm. at the back of the house where we used to put and she would say that you should burn it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's different now. I mean, now you yes. have vans, you have yeah, yeah. toilets. It was have... so, I'm telling you, that can you imagine sitting down when you have about four or five sanitary towels yeah, that doesn't on sound you? Right. It's really uncomfortable. And then you didn't have the kind of sanitary towels that you have today. You yeah. just stick it on. Here was, you had to make a like a belt with, two ends, you know, and the, the towels only had loops made with gauze. So I you have to put that. the tape through that. I mean, it's like, you know, tying something up like this. It's like this. a diaper almost. No, but uh-huh. diaper is not like that. Diaper, you just put a tape thing. Yeah, but the, I mean, it's like the it whole process. It wasn't as easy yes, as, it, as was, easy it was today. It was really bad. And can you imagine? I mean... Yeah, I know the sun's horrible. It was, it was very bad. For a working woman, 
it was i think that one has to be considering the kind of work that women go through and we just everybody is going crazy on mobile yesterday celebrating mothers day mothers day did anybody even bother to know what their mothers have gone through mm. or would they if they are working in an office as you said that they are against women getting period leave uh, period leaves at least give them off one or two days and ask them to compensate it when they are okay in some other way by extending hours of work or whatever mm. it is you can manage it yeah. but it's the mindset it's the attitude yeah. men have to understand this and also women there are other women who are not really as considerate to other women than they yeah. are yeah. not a I lot agree. of women are not considerate no, to other women they are not It's and they don't even think about it this whole conversation Oof. of of women's health is not i mean it's changing slowly but very, very slowly. slowly oh god <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> look who's in tandem to it should have been at this time you know navya your at your age it should have been headlines everywhere i mean we It's are talking take, about things that just we experience so see we can talk about in this time i mean it's it's a shame Yeah. It's a shame you're talking about progress you're talking about looking and seeing and uh, thinking ahead I mean it's so This bad is... that like last year we were doing a workshop for ara with a group of young girls in school and we were basically doing like a sex education course with them and I think there was a 11 or 12 year old girl who when we were talking about menstruation said that you know when i got my period i was surprised that my blood was red i thought it'd be blue because in sanitary pads for the longest time they used to pour blue, blue liquid yeah, they wouldn't yeah. pour red liquid so she thought that her period blood was going to be blue and but did i mean you know no, but that's the point nobody that, even educated us that a girl has to will start menstruating at a yeah, certain time i think it's i mean nobody told me i didn't even know i was not even aware who do they educate I mean no. I think it's not just the I don't know about here but I don't think it's just the responsibility of mothers and parents and families exactly also of our education yes. system to have our, our whole education system like is well anyway. I think it's important for us to have that in our education system yeah. formally as not yes, as like absolutely. a extra curricular thing yeah. but a part of the yeah. curriculum because it's it's important for not just girls but young boys mm-hmm. to also learn about this because they course. have sisters at home they have mothers at home and i think you know agastya has grown up to be sensitive to these things because we talked to him about it and because we're so open about it yeah. and i think probably because maybe at some point in school he you know we were taught about it and but why do you think that men take it for granted because obviously they they've never think, physically had to experience they don't have it, to go through so, it. so they, they don't, don't understand but unless sometimes they, you don't have to go through it to understand sometimes i mean I to be know, fair if they were max, say, maxing out on empathy we wouldn't have half the issues we have okay them. but i i would say that really there quite, are men there are also men who yeah. are very sensitive to it and who do it's not that they're all like you know insensitive towards menstruation there are men who it's are it's also no one ever talks about it. it it was such a taboo yeah no yeah. one ever talks about yeah. so how are they to even know i don't think their mothers or grandmothers would ever discuss yeah. it and they didn't they, discuss they it wouldn't even understand it for them I mean, it's like I a really very bewildering like kind a shock of thing to me yeah. you know you feel oh what have i done you feel you know you've done something wrong yeah. why why are you bleeding and what it it was like a shock to me of course i mean i mean yeah but i think it's it's changing there are men who are educating themselves about it and are sensitive to what women and go it's so through. strange you know companies mo- who make sanitary towels they are run by men most women's healthcare platforms in india are run by men most of them which is it's an is, irony nahi nee? I mean yeah you can look at it in two ways but yeah it is because I mean obviously a man wouldn't know what But I'm sure that they do it more because it's a business and not because yeah, they obviously. think or yeah, emotionally feel I about it. I don't think it. they're yeah. feeling anything. Yeah. Well they're obviously not looking at the menopause market which is a very big one and if only they have nothing to sell. They have nothing to sell. You can sell supplements, you can sell a lot. Yes. Supplements and all yes but maybe it's my next uh, business venture. Yeah, supplements. There's so many things hair care counseling. skin care counseling counseling is very important you know it's so important counseling today i mean i know that if you spoke to your family and said that you know i need counseling why what's wrong with you you know there was a stigma to that as well but i think that women need a lot of counseling to get reassurance 
that yeah i mean because or even if they're part of like communities i'm telling you for me at this stage listening to a lot of these podcasts and listening to a lot of women and them speaking about their experiences it just makes you feel okay i'm not alone and someone like me who has exposure i can travel i see and i'm educated i read i you know i listen to podcasts i'm so i'm well informed so can you imagine women who don't have access to that and how frightening and lonely and terrifying it must seem to them yeah. yeah but i think also i mean we talked about how you know it's important for families to talk about it how it should be in our education system but also pop culture and you yes. know it's important that they step up and yes. they represent women of a certain age or they are responsible and for and show them a little more realistically than just yeah. i'm seeing the most realistic portrayal of a woman in her 40s 50s was mayor of east town kate winslet yeah. where she was just you know she was without makeup her hair wasn't done she was in just baggy clothes and she was most of the time a wreck she was just eating like crisps out of a bag because you know she couldn't be bothered to make food she was holding down a job her kids were driving her mad she was getting blamed for everything and i thought that was such a relatable I mean obviously I'm not some undercover cop or anything but <laughs> obviously it was the most relatable portrayal of a woman in middle age and it wasn't so bad she was still attractive and I love that they show that like her young the young man she's working with found her really beautiful mm. we need more portrayals like that for to normalize that you you don't have to look completely airbrushed and beautiful all the time every time you step out you're not stepping out and waltzing down the street thinking I'm some like attending a fashion show or whatever it's important to look like this and it's important to show women looking like this every now and again because that is real life and it is not it is messy and it is a struggle and then maybe society will not have such unrealistic expectations you have a woman and she's handling so much and then her body is going through a change and you still expect her to look polished and tip top and mm. it I mean yeah I mean there is a long way to go but there is progress being made it's but you also not. a woman I mean not quick enough for my life to decide that I am not going to toe the line I am going to be what I am what I'm yeah. looking like what I'm feeling yes, and, and then you to... know what those women get told who she's really let herself go yeah, but then they and it's not said as a compliment I just want to tell you yeah, but yeah, then, that's then, fine. then I think it's up to them to block out the noise yeah, and not, yeah absolutely not yes but how about I... sensitizing people like today you're not going to say oh you're so fat or you're going to be a little particular about someone's skin pigment or someone's weight so why can't you be sensitive about a stage and a phase of life someone is going through and not make them feel just really bad about things that sometimes are genuinely not under their control. We as women stop giving a damn about what men and society I don't give a damn, have really. to say about our bodies then no, of they course there's that commenting about about No, it. of course there's that as well, but that's a bit of a pipe dream. It's not going to happen because so well, many industries work on women just being aware of I mean like the makeup industry or the skincare industry is like I don't know how many trillions of dollars worth. These are things that are there and they thrive on women not being happy but with what they see in the mirror and achieving something that's like so we need to tell yes. ourselves so no well. so that will never be a mindset. That'll never be it'll never be promoted it'll never be pushed if you do if you are that person then you're an outlier but it's never going to be the norm. I don't otherwise how be. do you sell lipsticks and eyeshadows and foundation and you can but I think you there's don't. nothing you wrong with yeah. that either. With, there's I mean, nothing wrong with that but I'm trying to tell you that there there's too much economics behind women not feeling like they look like a million bucks every day or not happy with what they see in the mirror. From shampoo to skin body lotion to whatever you put on your face to the way you smell so it's not going to work yeah but trust me either way i think that it's it's progressing but it'll it'll get there with time but yeah there is a you lot that you have to make your own identity you have to be yeah. an individual and i think you just have to block I mean, out the noise also a lot of people very uh, easy to say very hard to do Yes. Very it easy to, to say do, at twenty four that you have to block out the noise because hey, there's a lot that we no. We I'm just saying at twenty four, it's very easy to say that. It's not as easy to say that when you're forty four. 
Yeah, but there are. It's not that young. You're kids young. Are not, everything. You're idealistic. Life hasn't yeah, given you a future that tight slabs. Yeah, but it's not that young people are not. You have to also, you know. No, it's Sorry, easy to say that you have to be an example who no, can be away can be from the example. tribe. You of course, be, you can. And, and there are many women, women who are, are doing women that. Who will look at you and say, "Hey, if she can, why can't I?" I think we should take a break here, breathe, and then come back for my game. Hey, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Cock and Bull, Cyrus Antarikshan Shriram discussed the Congress landing in legal turmoil for using a KGF2 song and Kanye West's verbal fast. On The Habit Coach, Ashton tells us how song lyrics can act as affirmations. On Simplified, the gang recounts the multiple crises that have befallen the UK and what to expect from PM Rishi Sunak. On The Advertiser's Guide to the Galaxy, Karthik explores a medicine print ad and looks at the messaging of a model dressed as doctors. And on all things policy, the Takshashila folks discuss genetically modified plants. Once again, don't forget to visit our merch store on ivmpodcasts.com. We have some exciting stuff for you. Follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you like our shows, spread the word, tell your friends, and don't forget to rate and review them wherever you're listening to them. You'll also find all our shows on youtube.com slash ivmpodcasts. Thank you for making this possible. Welcome back to What the Hell, Navya. I think this is some great energy, so let's use it for our Bumble question game. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite part yeah. of the episode. Yeah. Okay, what is a funny alternate term that you've heard people use for periods or pads? Uh, no. Pads, I haven't heard anybody. Uh, no, I can't I, bear I it when people say chums. chums yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh God! Oh, God I so see annoying. that. I mean, when we were teenagers, it was called chums. Chums. I've got my chums. But why? Oh, I have no. Because idea. again, because it's people are embarrassed to say. Yeah, but that's so oh, weird. But yeah, it's, really it's really not really your annoying. friend. Yeah. It's really <laughs> annoying friend. But yeah, chums is something I yeah, cannot. And there's another. Handle. There was another term I yeah, can't there was. remember. What? See? There are many terms. See, since you know everything. I mean, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> I can't remember, but there was another term. Term for periods. Yes. I mean, which you discussed with your friends. People used to say, I've got my P, and I'm like, what does that even mean? What, like, just say it. That's and then, the big, what you know, they what say, does that okay? even mean? Like, yeah, so no, everyone no, knows. I've got so my P means, what do you think? So I've got annoying. a pimple. Yeah, it could be a pimple. You know, and you communicated with your girlfriend and said, please don't. This is not my time. Okay. Yeah, oh, you've time. got your chums. <laughs> oh my God, it really that irritates me. Well, I mean, I don't know how many people did that when my age, when I was young. I feel like now people just say periods. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. It's, it's like when I was growing up, there were many of these things. People would say, oh, your mama, I think you would say, your Sunday is longer than your Monday means like your slip is showing or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, well, anyway, thank you for today. Guys, Good. lots to learn, lots to be aware of, lots to be sensitized about. So thank and you. And lots for, more to talk about. And lots more to be done. For too long, we have kept these conversations behind closed doors. And as you heard in today's episode, I think it's important that we deal with this on our own and talk about it openly. I hope that today, through our conversation, it helped you empower yourself and those around you with more knowledge and informed choices. And I want to remind all of you that this is not just a battle that we need to fight on our own. We need the men in our lives to also be open and honest about it. And I hope that this episode helped you understand why that's so important. And I really wish all you fellow menstruators a calm and pain-free period. If you have anything more to add or share any of your stories with me, connect on Instagram at Navya Naveli Nanda. And on that note, I'll sign off on this one, but I'll see you again next week. What the hell? Hello everyone, I am Navya Naveli Nanda, host of What the Hell Navya on the IBM Podcast Network. Thank you for such an overwhelming response to the show. Click on the subscribe button and the bell icon on our YouTube channel, What the Hell Navya, to see more short clips and BTS videos. There's a lot more coming, so do it quick!